The Confederate States of America was formed by the southern states that left the Union starting in December 1860. The new nation struggled to survive over the next five years of civil war with the United States, and when the war finally ended with the defeat of the Confederacy, a mystery arose, one that's not been solved to this day. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and you're listening to Stories, a history of Appalachia. Steve, this really piqued my interest because when they started mentioning gold and silver, I wondered to myself, did my great-great-grandfather maybe come across some of this silver and use it for his <laughs> silver coins? Because no one knows whatever happened to this. It was like a war chest full of gold and silver, and there's so many stories surrounding this that it's you don't really know what to believe, and you don't really know where it could possibly be even to this day, even if it existed in the first place. But we're going to talk about that here on this podcast. Yeah, kind of like a legend, the legend of what happened to the Confederate Treasury's money. So we'll see what we got here. The Confederacy dealt with having enough resources to provide clothing, arms, and ammunition for their soldiers, You know, being able to feed them, not to mention the individual states struggling to make ends meet. Today, we tell a story that shows that the Confederacy may have been actually financially solvent because of a stash of gold that mysteriously went missing when the Confederacy collapsed. And as Rod said, this gold has never been found. Now, most Americans know that the Civil War ended in April 1865, with General Robert E. Lee surrendering to General Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. But did you know that there might be a stash of gold still out there somewhere? perhaps even in the Appalachian Mountains of western North Carolina. You see, the South supposedly had a treasure that went missing near the end of the Civil War worth millions of dollars in gold. We begin our story of missing gold with the fate of Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederate States of America. On Sunday, April 2, 1865, Davis was attending church in Richmond when he learned uh, General Robert E. Lee's defensive hold in nearby Petersburg had been broken by Union forces and that the evacuation of Richmond was imminent. Davis communicated with Lee and pleaded with the Confederate general to form defensive lines just to hold for one more day, giving him time to inform his cabinet that Richmond would have to be evacuated. Davis and his cabinet would then take the Confederate treasury with them, fleeing to safety farther south. According to the story, Lee told Davis that he had until 8 p.m. to load the gold, valuables, and the cabinet members onto two trains and travel south on the only rail line still open and not taken by Union forces. At that point, Confederate officials boarded a first train while a second train carried a, quote, special cargo, end quote, That cargo was supposedly the contents of the Confederate treasury. It's alleged that the treasury consisted of gold ingots, gold double eagle coins, silver coins, silver bricks, and Mexican silver dollars. But it's here where the story of the bundle gets a little difficult to follow. You see, the exact amount in the treasuries are hard to pin down. One book writer on the subject found references to $300,000 in the War Department Treasury and $500,000 in gold and silver in the Confederate Treasury. Well, nonetheless, Davis and his cabinet either left out first or followed the unknown Confederate loot until the train tracks ended. There are stories on whether the treasure train left Richmond before or after Davis's train, but historians do agree that both trains made it to the Virginia town of Danville on the Dan River on their journey south. Stories and accounts claim that Davis stayed for just a few days after the Treasury left as he stayed at Sutherland Mansion for a brief visit in Danville and then got back on his train and headed for Greensboro and other locations further south until Union troops caught up with him. Now, there are stories of Davis removing some funds from the Treasury for covering the Confederate president's party expenses before the train headed for Greensboro. It's also rumored that the treasure was placed into containers once used for sugar, coffee, flour, and ammunition. So was Jefferson Davis the decoy in the plans to keep the Confederate Treasury out of the hands of the Union? Well, somewhere in Wilkes County, North Carolina, is where the escape plan of the Confederacy supposedly ran off the tracks and into the hands of bushwhackers, as stragglers from the Union and Confederate armies had got wind of the treasure and made their move. 
Residents of Wilkes County who witnessed the event said that the bushwhackers allegedly waded knee-deep in gold and silver coinage before loading it up in all kinds of bags and sacks and riding away. Some also believe that Confederate gold is buried in Wilkes County, but no definitive proof has surfaced since the end of the war. But, Steve, as always, the search goes on, and other people believe the treasure never left Danville. But there are other stories that tell of hidden Confederate gold going through Columbia, Tennessee, as accounts of upwards of $100,000 in gold and silver coins was transported by wagon in two wooden crates. As the men transporting the money neared Athens, Alabama, the wagon became stuck in a muddy bog hole. As they tried to free the wagon, they were warned that Union soldiers were on their way. Afraid that the money would fall into Union hands, the men buried the crates of gold and silver about a half mile west of an old stream crossing, about four miles north of Athens, Alabama, in Limestone County. And as the story goes, the coins have never been recovered. It's alleged that nearly $30 million may have been buried outside of Savannah, Georgia, which was a hub of minting, trading, and gold mining before it fell to Union forces. The rumor is that the gold was buried under the name of a Confederate general between two false generals in a cemetery for the day when the South would rise again or to keep the Union from gaining possession of it. The Confederate treasury is even rumored to have made its way to Canada. There are stories of Southern spies preparing for a Confederate resurgence after the Civil War who buried millions of dollars in gold at sites across Canada in the 1860s. Well, now, Steve, it's worth noting, too, that Canada was an important haven for Confederate operatives during the Civil War who went on to form the nucleus of a secret society, well, one that's not so secret today, the Knights of the Golden Circle. That group allegedly kept the South's dream of independence alive for decades after Lee surrendered at Appomattox to Grant. The amassed treasury was estimated at one time to include more than $2 million in gold and silver coins. Because of the strict secrecy of that group, the amount of cash reserves and the generations that have passed since the money was buried, uh, no one can say for sure where the treasure is. Now, if the treasury did exist, there may be a fortune in Confederate gold buried across not only a dozen states in the South, but in our neighbor to the North as well. Now, one Danville historian and treasure hunter, Albert Atwell, believed that part of the treasure is buried in what is now Danville National Cemetery, and that maps leading to sites where parts of the treasure are buried in locations all across the South are buried in his great-great-grandfather's grave in that cemetery, and Rod, in 2010, even the History Channel's Brad Meltzer's Decoded show got in on the mystery, coming to Danville in search of the mystery treasure. Now, the crew was denied permission by the city of Danville to do any digging and had to limit their exploration to using non-invasive tools such as metal detectors. So I guess unless they printed those maps on steel plates, they wouldn't have found them, don't you think? I would say so. That's probably a good conclusion. <laughs> So for now, the story of the Confederate treasury is the stuff of legend and remains a mystery yet to be solved. Now, I, I think it's very interesting, Steve, that we that we talk about the Confederate treasury and that, you know, the South, it was always portrayed that the South was in such uh, poor shape when they were at war, which in a lot of ways they were. But all of this money that had been set aside for whatever the case may have been to uh, for the South to rise again or whatever it may have been, there's got to be some kind of truth to it somewhere that some of this gold, money that they had gotten, gold, silver, wherever they had got it from, had to be somewhere. It had to go somewhere. And if they were trying to get out of Richmond and you know get South and trying to keep the South together, you would think that they would have tried to go and they would hide it out somewhere to where it could be I guess, retrieved at a later date, but no one knows where all this stuff is at. There's well, just story after story. Well, I want to point out the other possible point of view, and that's the fact that they were out of money, maybe. Mm -hmm. And there was no treasury they took with them, and they just ran for their lives. But that, That's true, too. We'll never know, it appears. Either mm -hmm. there's tons of gold and silver all over the South, or the only thing we had left from... The South was the legend of Jefferson Davis running off in a woman's dress. I mean, you know, yes, that's about now, it. We, 
And we didn't mention that either. We were very nice and considerate about that, too. Yes, so. yes. We won't mention it either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the story of the mysterious Confederate treasury. Thanks for listening. Now, we have a favor to ask of you folks. Stories is now available not only on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher, but on a brand new app called Radio Public. If you download the app for your phone from the iTunes Store or the Google Store, then listen to stories on the app, we get a share of revenue, which will help us be able to keep bringing you more of the history of Appalachia. And by the way, Radio Public also has many of your other favorite podcasts too, so you'll be helping them out as well. If you'd like to have some more stories about Appalachia, check us out on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia and on Twitter at Story Appalachia. Till next time, thanks for listening. Y'all take care. So long, everybody.